The Boston Celtics embarrassed my Raptors so bad the other day, a member of their fan base tweeted an apology at your boy. Come on, man. Feelings aside, and respect to Jason Tatum, who was a game-high plus 42, extending his league lead for the highest plus-minus. Jason's now tied with Kevin Durant, DeAndre Jordan, and Draymond Green for the most games of having a plus-minus of over 40 throughout the last 20 years. Then there's Jalen Brown, who flew in for three second-half dunks and beasted from the perimeter through to the paint. Scary part about the Seas sweeping the Brooklyn-Toronto back-to-back -back is the fact that the backcourt of Drew Holiday and Derek White shot just 3 for 15 from deep, yet Boston still beat the Nets and Raps by a combined 37. But story of this Celtics season's been the addition of Chris Stapp's Porzingis, who bounced back from an off night by scoring 20-plus for already the fifth time with his fourth career organization. New York's fourth overall pick back in 2015 has seemingly found a new home, shooting a career high by far in both field goal and three-point percentage. Boston's easily the way-too-early 2024 title favorite, so keep it locked for an in-depth breakdown of their beastliness on the attempted path towards franchise chip number 18. But just 10.2% of you watching right now are subscribed. Press subscribe if you haven't already. Splash thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. We'll get to the on-court logistics of adding Porzingis, but not only did Boston embarrass my hometown team, with the blistering start the Celtics are off to fueled by a duo in Tatum and Brown that's going off, the take you're about to hear from Jay Williams on ESPN's Get Up is one we're putting in the receipt book. In one game, Giannis and Dame are more compatible and have less redundancy than the seven-year career of Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. More compatible and less redundancy That's than the seven-year career of Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. Given Milwaukee's gotten off to a 5-4 and four start and got blown out by my Raptors, who Boston just beat by 23, that bold comparison from ESPN hasn't aged too well up to this point. But of course, it goes without saying, anything can change with 73 games on the schedule as of this recording. Jason Tatum is, as of right now, in the debate for the best player in the association as the product of Duke from St. Louis has so far displayed a new level of playmaking composure offensively and intensified effort and awareness defensively. Turning the ball over slightly less than the last two years prior, Jason's general decision-making yet unflappable body language when he does make a mistake has also vamped his leadership. For example, while my guy Dennis Schroeder took exception to Boston challenging a call while already up 30, Tatum would state the importance of Joe Mazzula coaching just as hard in those moments. That's big when your top player is open in spreading the coach's message. Because Missoula spoke on Schroeder's reaction, stating, quote, it was a clear opportunity to empower my players and let them know I'm coaching you, end quote. We're done when I say we're done. I'm a fan of Schroeder being prideful, but I can at the same time respect the attention to detail and stamina from Coach Missoula to develop his players minute 1 through 48 and roster spot 1 through 15. Getting everyone on the team involved and valuing every moment is essential in order to build up championship type habits, not to mention more crucially, build up chemistry. Regarding said vibes, one of the two newest Celtic All-Stars in Porzingis would go in-depth on his evolving continuity with Jalen Brown. He's, uh, he's obviously very explosive. He can make so much happen on the court with uh, how, he's, how he is. And so we're still in the beginning stages because I think we're going to, like, our uh, chemistry is just going to be, it's just going to get so much better. Like, I'm telling you. You're just gonna see, like it's gonna get a lot better. And, and uh, but but I love playing with him. Uh, he creates a lot of the situations. He creates a lot of. Uh, draws a lot of attention and just opens things up for, for myself. For everybody. The addition of a 7-4 phenom who at his best snipes like the chef and slashes like the freak makes Boston so much more overwhelming than they already were to game plan for and stick with out of your typical PNR, DHO, and stationary handoff actions. The floor spacing and athleticism is nice, but it makes things that much more smooth when Porzingis is able to precisely locate bounce pass entries in traffic from beyond the arc to the middle of the key. Given facilitating is a questionable aspect to his game, how Chris Dapps continues to pass the rock effectively will be something to watch. For Boston, though, in years prior, defenses could maybe get away with pick-and-roll traps like this one on Jalen Brown, but with the mobility, size, and finishing of Chris Dapps to throw it into, all-star-to-all-star -all DHO sets like that one are currently money. 
So far, KP's making an incredible 43.5% of his catch and shoot threes in a Celtic uniform, but right now, defenses can't tell if he's either popping out to release one of those patented stretch big distance bombs or rolling downhill to the cup out of basic pick and rolls. Therefore, whether Missoula and Holiday are running either that standard PNR, an advanced off ball action, or the rare isolation, this creates a seamless flow, with everyone aware of the fact that there's a beyond legitimate number three guy whose variety of scoring talent can both pressure relieve and space create. On top of everything else the Celtics can throw at you, having this caliber of third weapon is mentally deteriorating for both opposing coaches trying to scout them out, and obviously opposing defenders opting which poison they're obligated to choose. Aside from D. White, who we looked at in my last video, the most underrated Celtic by far is their other new addition next to Porzingis and Drew Holiday. Definitively setting the tempo prior to the Toronto matchup, in every home game for Boston, Drew scored on the opening possession off a Tatum assist. Holiday's stable offensive intelligence is something Boston had been lacking at the point guard position in years prior. He's the lone NBA champion on this roster for a reason. The man knows how to win and has the talent to back up his IQ. Given he's the same caliber defender as Smart, but is far more talented offensively, credit to GM Brad Stevens for acting as any elite front office member would by shaking things up when they weren't working in years past. I know an executive or two who could learn from that. In terms of Boston's brilliant roster construction around the Jays since Steven's transition from coach to general manager in the summer of 2021, displaying the end-to-end -end firepower of this Boston system, not only is Tatum well ahead of the pack in league-wide plus-minus, the rest of the starting lineup in Holiday, Porzingis, White, and Brown give Boston five of the top 15 most positively impacting players across the association. This Boston team is damn stacked, and as I said, easily the early title favorite, but that's just my take. Is Boston the early title favorite in your opinion? Why or why not? Best answer down below in the comments section earns next video's commenter shout out, and the top 5 commenters by the end of the year earn free NBA merch of their choosing, so make sure to leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Community Speaks winner is Bose, who says, There's no reason the Warriors shouldn't extend current clay. They've both built so much equity with this team that it would be hard to imagine a world where they leave. Now I can see that Clay's contract may be a bit more difficult on the negotiations because he may want more money, but his numbers 9 games into the season are fine but not top tier. They'll all find a way to make it work because they just want to win, and that's what this group has shown they can do. Appreciate that take and every other. Thank you for watching. DFlow signing off.